Hi, I'm Audrey, the host of My Tar Heel Adventures. Every Friday, we visit a new city in North Carolina to give you an inside peek at our beautiful state. Join me as I explore the Tar Heel State on My Tar Heel Adventures. Hi guys, we're here at Epilogue Books and we're here with the co-owner, Jaime Sanchez. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for the visit. Yes, I'm looking around and I'm sipping on some coffee here. I have the blueberry lavender and this is so delicious. Like I will drive hours for this because, yes, <laughs> this is a, the blueberry lavender latte. It's one of their popular drinks and oh my gosh, so delicious. So can you tell us a little bit about Epilogue? Because this place is an entire mood. <laughs> Indeed it is, and we love it. It's our family in a nutshell, from the Mexican pastries, which are part of my heritage, to the books that we read. We wanted to make sure that it reflected us as a family and our values. That's why we carry books by marginalized voices, and we try to elevate those voices. We do the hard work to make sure that we put those stories on a table that you wouldn't normally see in a bookstore. Luckily, the community responded positively, and like you said, it's a vibe. People like it here. We try to make it cozy. We try to make it that home away from home, and it's working. People love it. The community is very supportive, so thank you, community. We made it a mission to make sure that we're all positive to the community. So with that in mind, we offer health insurance. We pay a living wage and continue on that mission. It can be done. Small businesses can do this. Um, it requires a lot of hard work, but if you really believe in it, it can be done. That is so great. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the other items on your menu? I know you mentioned you have Mexican pastries, and then I am sipping on the blueberry lavender coffee. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you have to offer? Absolutely. So we have a um, unique menu to the area uh, from Mexican pastries, which we not only stick to the basics of what a panaderia Mexican bakery would be, we actually try to go above and beyond to make sure that we include as many people as possible vegan empanadas so those are turnovers with vegan fillings to make sure we include that population that requires that our drinks start vegan and they can continue being vegan for you in regards to the menu we do change it seasonally to make sure we well we give you something ice especially during the summer and we actually make all our syrups in-house we play around it's fun for us and it's something that we hope you enjoy when you come in and if you need a nightcap we also have beer and wine hey you, you need to wind down at some point from the day so this is a perfect spot to come in hang out read a book or two so you mentioned that a lot of your authors are from marginalized backgrounds. Who are some of the authors that you guys are featuring? Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the books? Well, the selection is very much a work by all team members in here. All the recs that you see in here, it's team members reading books, things that the team members are passionate about. At least, you know, one of my personal favorites is a local author, Misha Marin, who just recently released a book, A Perpetual West. It's a story that spoke to me because it talks about the border between Mexico and the US, which is where I grew up. Um, those voices that bring those stories that you wouldn't normally hear are what we feature here, not just by local authors, but authors from many different backgrounds, many different walks of life, if you will. Epilogue seems to be a college hotspot. It's right here on campus at UNC Chapel Hill, and there's plenty of students in here who are in here to study and get their work done or just hang out. So with that being said, does Epilogue have events for people on campus or off campus? We are ramping up our events, actually. We're having more now that we have our system section prologue open through the summer we have been doing book readings we have a queer book club as well as trivia all through the summer and basically anything that we can think of in a meeting with our events people if it's fun for us if it's positive for the community then you'll see it in our calendar we want to make sure we create compelling events for everybody from the locals that are here long term to the students that spend a large part of their life here um, so we want to make sure we make compelling events for everybody that brings everybody together. Love it. So Epilogue is a home away from home for a lot of the locals here. And so with that being said, what are your hours and where can we find you on social media? So our summer hours are 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Saturday and then 9 to 7 on Sundays. You can find us on social media on Epilogue Book CH. Sounds good. We'll definitely be checking you out. Thank you so much, Jaime. Thank you.
Hi guys, so we're here at the Ackland Museum and we're here with our very special friends, Allison and Sydney. Well, tell us a little bit about Ackland. What do you guys have on display? What can we look forward to this summer? Sure, so we have two special exhibitions on view right now. Alexis Rockman Shipwrecks, which you can see a beautiful image behind me of, and House Guests, a work, uh, works that are on loan to us from the Crystal Bridges Museum in Arkansas. Yeah, so in addition to the exhibitions that Allison mentioned, we have an incredible installation by an artist called the Urban Conga, and it's called Park. So it's really exciting. It's here until July 2024. And what we love about it is that it encourages users to interact with it. And so it's really activated by user engagement. And so during the day, sun will cast shadows onto the piece. And at night, lights light up the viewer shadows as well. And it's really encouraged for viewers to rest or play or just interact with the piece itself. It's meant to serve almost as an extension of the museum and you can see that actually a lot in its physical form and how it mirrors a lot of the facades of the building. Allison, can you talk about some of the programs and uh, the uses with the art installation? Absolutely. So we've had dance performances at Ackland Park. We have had concerts. We are looking forward to some jazz performances this fall. We might try yoga, our yoga class outside on the sculptures. So we're really looking forward to different ways that we can experience it. It's just been installed for a couple of months and like Sydney said, we have it for a couple of years to explore. So yeah, we're really looking forward to see how visitors want to interact with it. We've seen the cool art installation outside, but what are some of the art highlights that you guys currently have inside? So um, the Acklin actually features over 20,000 works ranging from antiquities to contemporary art. Um, it actually has probably the largest Asian art collection in North Carolina. So it's something that we're really proud of. Um, so in addition to the ones, the rotating ex exhibits that we have on view, you can always come and view the Acklin's permanent collection. So how long have you guys been here at, at Ackland and what are your hours? So the museum's been open since 1958 on UNC's campus and our hours are Wednesday through Sundays. We're open 10 to 5 Wednesday through Saturday and 1 to 5 on Sundays. Sounds good. Where can we find you on social media? Oh, great question. We're on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So you can find us there and uh, join us. Yeah, like our, like our posts and see what we're up to. Always information about events that are coming up. I should mention we have the second Friday Art Walk. The second Friday of every month we're open till 9, so it's a great after work place to be, sit out on the terrace, enjoy a beer from our pop-up beer gardens. Oh, that sounds so fun. Definitely have to check that out. But thank you ladies so much. Hi guys, Audrey here. I'm with Stephanie Colbert, who is the Director of Marketing with the Chapel Hill Downtown Partnership. Thank you so much for inviting us out to Chapel Hill and just helping us find our way around. You have been a lifesaver today, so thank you so much. So I would like to talk a little bit about the Chapel Hill Downtown Partnership. Can you, what is it and what do you guys do? Well, we are the organization that helps market, organize events, and generally just draw awareness to the downtown area of Chapel Hill. So that includes Franklin and Rosemary Streets as long as side streets off of both of those. What kind of community events do you guys have coming up with the Chapel Hill Downtown Partnership? We're very excited to have a robust program calendar coming up. Um, so we will start having live music downtown in August, specifically August 12th. It's part of our downtown live series. So visitors who are walking up and down Franklin Street get to hear live music from local musicians um, from every, every genre. So it makes the shopping and dining experience more exciting and just give it kind of an ambiance. Uh, we'll also have fall events. We're working with the town of Chapel Hill with their arts and culture department. They will have festival down here in the downtown area. And we plan to have holiday events as well as game day events for um, football Saturdays. So we're very excited about that. So it sounds like there's some great community events coming up. What, uh, what bands can we expect with the live music? So we have a couple of um, artists, uh, Alice Osborne, Stephen Jackson, Trey Charles, a lot of um, local Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area musicians who will come and play live all up and down Franklin Street. So there will be different points. Um, so it'll be spread out so that way um, everything's not in one area from east to west. Sounds good. Can you tell us about um, some things that are coming to Franklin? 
Yes, so we have um, several new businesses that are looking to locate here. Uh, we have a Raisin Cane's, which is um, a chicken strip and fries joint that's similar to Zaxby's that will be located down on Franklin Street um, coming soon, as well as numerous other restaurants and shops that are looking to um, have locations here. It's a great, great spot. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Hi guys, we're here with Steven, who is the manager of the tap room here at Gizmo Brew Works. So can you tell us a little bit about Gizmo Brew Works? Sure, uh, the company has been around nine years, started in Raleigh. We opened this tap room two and a half years ago, and we actually just opened up a location in Durham about four months ago. So it's going pretty well. That is so great to hear. So here at the Chapel Hill location, um, do you guys have a lot of events, and, or do you have any events coming up? Yeah, we've got a few things coming up besides our normal weekly events like music bingo and trivia, which we have on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We've got live music every Friday. And then with the school year starting, we're going to have people here for football and basketball, as well as having an Oktoberfest party in uh, September, on September 17th. Sounds good. Sounds like some really cool events coming up. Can't wait to see what you, how you guys do. So with the live events that are happening here every Friday night, Stephen, what type of um, music do you guys have? Are there any local bands that come through? Yeah, we've got a few local bands that come through. Uh, Julia, the band, which plays a lot in our Raleigh location, is going to be coming here. Uh, we also have a great funk group called uh, Frank and Walrus that's here. We like to play a little bit of everything, you know, some country, some indie music. But we also want to keep it local, support local music and lo local artists as well. How many beers does Gizmo Brew Works make and what are some of your most popular items? So we release uh, one to three new beers every week. So. Pretty quick turnaround. At this tap room, we have 50 taps. That includes cider, seltzer, wine, uh, hard ginger beer as well. At this location, unlike the other locations, we also have a liquor license, so we make cocktails. Um, some of our most popular ones, we have a core six beers that we've got, fake news, dad jokes being among them. Right here, we've got two beers that are new. We've got the Arnie is my dad, which is an Arnold Palmer Pilsner. And then we've got the Forbidden Fruits Watermelon, and that is a watermelon uh, sour goes, essentially. And then using one of our core beers, the Gizmo Goes Wild, we're making our own take on an Aperol Spritz, so a great summer drink. Uh, we'll probably have it all year round. Sounds good. And um, these drinks are definitely delicious. So, Stephen, what does the crowd here look like? So it's kind of all over the map. Uh, we do our best to really cater to everyone. Obviously, being right across the street from UNC, we've got a lot of college kids that come in. Uh, we have a lot of grad students, professors trying to shake the day off as well. A lot of locals coming in in the summer. Having something for everybody is important to us, making sure it's a welcoming environment, especially for dogs. We're super dog friendly, so we like to see as many dogs in here as possible too. Well, that sounds like a great time. Be sure to check out Gizmo Brew Works here in Chapel Hill, Raleigh, or in Durham. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications to keep up with all of our adventures. Now I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Gator Metal Roofing. Hi everyone, I'm Ron. A Gator metal roof is a lot more affordable than you may think. Asphalt paper shingles are designed to fail from the very first day they are installed. And when the wind blows, watch out. But not with our Gator metal roof. Our metal roof is metal strong and can withstand the toughest weather North Carolina can give us. Our smart paint technology is designed for our hot climate and harsh weather. All our Gator metal roofs are made right here in North Carolina and reflect the hot sun away from your home keeping it cool in the summer and guaranteed to lower your energy bills. If it's time to replace your roof, or if you just want to upgrade to a new energy efficient Gator metal roof. Give Gator a call because they do a good job. I got a good job done and I know for a fact that roof is going to outlast me. <laughs> call now and receive $1,500 off your new metal roof. And if you qualify, get 0% financing with payments as low as $99 per month. So get off your asphalt and call Gator Metal Roofing today.